When we went, he treated us with, with so much hospitality, it was thousands of people there. I could not believe it. I said, 13,000 people. I said, we ain't even know. <laughs> And you can ask after that in the service, we ripped the stage. We was known for ripping the stage as dual committee. And so we started doing so many shows. He opened the door, God opened the door through Bishop Asher, and we started doing a whole lot of other shows. Then this guy named Sebo heard about us. He used to call himself the bald head nut, fish telling in the cut. He called me and he was like, he was like, all right. I was like, who is this? He was like, Bob. I'm like, who? <laughs> Bob. <laughs> I'm like, Bob. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> See Bob, gas chain. I'm like, what? What's up, Bob? Because I was a fan of Sea Bob. I was like, man, this dude is calling me. I know how he got and he called me, he was like, I need y'all to show up to the studio downtown. What's the name of that studio? Uh, Lord have mercy, was that studio over there downtown in the lofts? What was that studio? Uh, pajama. 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 Yeah. Show up, Pajama, thank you. Pajama Studios. He said, show up to Pajama Studios. I'm doing an album called Autopsy, and I want you to keep on my song while stomping in my steel toe. I was like, woo. Man, now we finally about to you know get out there. This is our first chance to get a record deal. So finally, we went there. We man, keep we knocked it out. I'm telling you, we were professionals, and we knocked it out. Bo was loving it. He was like, "Yeah, it's my group. It's my group." His partner T. Fred came through. Was like, mm -hmm. you know, he came through, and he was kind of like you know, our, you know our style. They signed us to AWOL Records. Now we are a major. Artists were independent but major. Because Sebo was selling like 50, 60,000 units at the time. And this is 1993 now. Mm -hmm. He's selling 50, 60,000 units at a time. Independent. Want me to tell you how much money that is? $7 times 60,000. Can somebody say, wow? <laughs> that was, that's independent in the music business. Becoming millionaires overnight. And so I got myself into that, you know, I was like, oh, cool. Simo put us out, he was working on our dual comedy album. And something happened with AWOL though at that time because we had become so close to AWOL. And I, T. Fred's mom, God bless her soul, she was so, she was like my mom. And we used to go there every Thanksgiving and eat. We'd get on the Greyhound, we'd keep, we'd smoke cigarettes. <laughs> In the gray hell bathroom, we talk about boys. We be working on the blue committee now. <laughs> Smoking <laughs> long barrels. <laughs> we came a long way. You sure have, kid. <laughs> we were 15 years old. <laughs> talk about we came a long way. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, hey man, uh, what happened was. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all, y'all say y'all want to hear the story, I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. So something happened with AWOL too, where we couldn't agree upon a certain thing, so we decided to back out of AWOL's deal. And it was a mutual decision. See, Paul, he's still my friend. T. Fred, I ain't heard from him in a while, but we had no disputings, no you know, disagreements. We just had to back out of the deal. And we started making a little money with AWOL doing shows with Sebo. But at a particular time, me and Keith decided that, well, you know, we're going to kind of back it up since we can't agree upon this one thing. And they, you know, we didn't pursue the album. We just did that one project. But then, it was funny because me and Keith, we still did shows. We were still working the shows. And I believe we did a second Soul Beat Day. I mean, uh, Hip Hop on the Green, excuse me. We did, a, we, we did three. Right, right, right. So around the third. Around the second one, but it was the second one that we did to where this young man that I grew up with used to bother me about getting in our group. 
And this young man, you know, I grew up with him, and, and he used to show up at my house. And me and Keith come home from a show, and this dude would be on my porch waiting on me. And but I grew up with him, so we like family. We all grew up on the 103rd, like right? in the hundreds, spray work right there. So I knew him. And, and Keith used to be like, what is this dude, man? Showing up all of that, that's a easy like that, man. Who is this dude? Matter of fact, we the ones that came up with the cheesy and, and, and what and all of that, the easies and all. We came up with all of that. We was we was the ones that came up with the ebonics. So we put the, you know, that within the rap game. And everybody started saying it. I just needed to let y'all know that. <laughs> we needed to get them the cheesy and what's up her and all of that stuff, right? We, we made that lingo. But anyway. And so he's kept on showing up to my house. And Keith used to be like, what's up with Keith was like, man, we can't have nobody infiltrating our clique, following us around. I'm like, this is my dog, though. He's going to be our hype, man, Sneak. And me and Sneak used to have those side meetings while, while my boy used to be over there waiting on us to make a decision, right? Me and Keith, Keith came to the side like this. Hey, don't tell me okay? You probably didn't hear what we were saying, but all he seen was like, <laughs> and I'm like, Sneak is good. We're going to keep it together, but that's my dog. I'm telling you, we should try something different. And we should really try to add somebody, you know, as a hype man, so we don't have to do so much stage work. And he was like, <laughs> And my boy over here like, because <laughs> he was really excited about being in the group. So we made a decision. We was like, let's go ahead and put him in the group. And then he always was together about things. And we put him in the group. And by the, name, by the way, that boy name is Bart. <laughs> the third member of Three Times Crazy. And so we put him in the group. It was all good. And Bart didn't have no shame in his game. Bart was after becoming successful in music. And that was a friend of mine that I grew up with. So I was like, yeah, put him in the group. He was persistent. And I'm talking about the brother was persistent. And, 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 and getting with us. He used to be on my front porch. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. When I wake up in the morning sometimes, he was on my front porch like, well, hey, what's up? You know what I'm saying? And so he was persistent. So I'm like, this brother's excited. Let's add him in the group. So we added him in the group. Now we a group. We went to the studio because Bart met this guy named Spence. And when he met this guy named Spence, he was like, man, I know y'all just got out of the thing with Sibo, but at this, I'm telling you, my boy is willing to put up some money for us to really become successful. I was like, man, that sounds good. I've been rapping for so long. I'm like, Lord, when is it going to happen? Because even though I had back sweet, you know, you can't leave the Lord. Oh, can I get some help right here? Yeah. Even though I had back sweet, it was hard for me to leave God. I continued to pray and continue to ask God to lead me and guide me. And so we, we met up with Spence, we went to the studio, we did this song called, I can't say the name of it in here, but it was, it was like Try to Fade Me, y'all remember that? Yeah. Try to Fade Me, Style It's Flowing, Sickly, all that. So we did that first song. At this time, we, we were so excited about the song because we hooked up with this producer named Tom Capone, which was Spence Parker. And so we were so excited about the song, we was like, man, this is the best work we ever did. It sounds so clear. It's, it's tight. Our full manage is working. And I was like, uh, well, well let's, 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 you know, let's proceed. Let's do an album with it. 